Hello, uh, so a couple of days ago, my friend and his son came round and put a new roof on my garage. And this needed doing for some time. Uh, the old roof is awful, had holes in it. It was like a bloody swamp in the uh, garage. And you wouldn't want to keep a car in there. It's also so nice now to be able to walk on it without worrying about where you stand or use boards or run the risk of falling through one of the holes. So when I do aerial work, I'm gonna be completely safe up here. So, but that's not the subject of the video. But the roof looks good, and we had a, lot, a fair bit of rain last night, and no, no, none came in as far as I can see. So yeah, the subject of the video is, um, they brought around this Class D amplifier, which they bought on eBay and they wanted me to test it out. So uh, go back in the workshop and do that. So here it is, and it's called Hong Zing, which is quite a nice name, I guess. And it reminds me very much of um, the amps that uh, kids used to stick in their cars. Uh, and they would drive around being rather annoying and thump thumping everywhere they drove. But this is a fairly small thing. It's uh, Probably three and a half, four inches back to front, six inches wide maybe, and it's very light. I mean, it's not feels like there's nothing in it. And um, we look at the front power button. We've got a base, a sub base output, which is a separate output because it's got three outputs on it. We've got treble bass for the main output, main stereo output, and volume for the main stereo output. And a little LED of course. And we look at the back, 12 volt socket, which uh, worries me slightly. If it's running on 12 volts, it's not going to produce much output, is it? And, uh, whether it's got an inverter in it, I don't know. I don't think it has. Not from how uh, boost converter, whatever you want to call it, not from the weight of it. Anyway, there's your main uh, stereo outputs, right and left. So it's 4 ohms times 2, so I should test it at 4 ohms. And that's the sub, sub bass output, which I presume is a separate amplifier. And that's your main RCA stereo input. So what I'm going to do then is wire it all up, test it, look at it on the scope, put a nice clean sine wave into it, see what it produces and um, measure its distortion because class D amplifiers I've tested before I've found they're fairly poor on harmonic distortion so we'll have a look at that. So I just wire things up Okay, so this is my uh, test setup. Um, got 12 volts going in here. I've got uh, the two stereo outputs. I'm not testing the sub at the moment. They're wired up to basically two 4 ohm dummy loads, which you can see there. These are actually two two sets of 4 ohm resistors wired in series for 8 ohms, but I've shorted one of the resistors out on each side. So I've got a 4 ohm load, which is capable of um, at least 100 watts if I wanted it to be. And um, yeah, and I'm feeding in 1 kilohertz from the signal generator, amplitude 1.3 volts, not too bothered about the amplitude, but as long as it's enough. And I'm having to use this uh, line, out, line isolating transformer between the audio generator and the input because with class D amplifiers you cannot earth the outputs, the differential outputs and because my signal generator and my scope are all earthed together and I've got my scope connected across one of the outputs I would be earthing through the earth of the scope um, 
one of the outputs back via the signal generator. Uh, so that's why I'm using this uh, line isolation transformer, if that makes any sense. Makes sense to me, probably nobody else. So I've got a scope connected to it. I've also got my audio analyzer wired up, which is up there. HP 8903 audio analyzer. Now at the moment it's set to read watts at four into four ohms. So what I'm going to do now is look at the scope and crank up the volume. And I know I'm putting a very pure signal into it because I've tested the uh, signal generator before and it's got a very low distortion on it. So here we go, turning the volume up and up it comes and I can already see distortion even before I get to the peak. I mean that you can see that squiggly bit there that's a sure sign of distortion um, and I crank it right up that's basically uh, I suppose you could call that clipping, it's hard to know where distortion ends and clipping begins but yeah, what's it saying on the it's saying 3.69 volts RMS which is sadly not very much is it in other words they're running it the circuit on 12 volts they're not boosting up the voltage to get any more output power and if we go up to the audio analyzer which is measuring the power into 4 ohms it's a measurable 3.2 watts um, now I don't know what this thing was designed for, whether it was designed to stick in the car I think you get more power out of your average car stereo than you would out of this thing <laughs> but whatever uh, what else should I do, I've got to test the uh, distortion haven't I so let me just go up to the audio analyzer again so if I set it to um, AC level so we, as you can see we're reading 999.98 kilohertz that's the amplitude 3.6 volts RMS at 4 ohms and I press distortion I've got 10% distortion and that's uh, close to clipping which is absolutely abysmal um, so I turn it down a bit so it's no longer clipping as it, it actually goes up it's even worse as I turn the level down that's about uh, 2 volts RMS now on the scope reading and it's 11% distortion it's most bizarre you don't normally expect, expect this distortion to get worse with a lower output but whatever it is it's uh, fairly fairly awful um, back down to the scope So, yeah, it looks pretty dis pretty miserable looking sine wave. Whether you notice that in, um, in use, I don't know. I mean, a decent class AB amplifier using, I don't know, bipolars or MOSFETs or whatever, decent stereo amplifier, hi-fi amplifier, you wouldn't expect much more than 0.01% distortion, something like that, at maximum volume. So I think this is a fairly awful thing. Um, I suppose I could do it. It's got a lot of refractions. I wonder whether it's that bloody light again, isn't it? Let's just do um, a frequency response. I'm going to set the tones in the center and I'll go down to 100. Distortions come down to 7%, that's probably because the level's dropped off. I 
that's maximum output again and it's uh, it's dropped down to 3 volts now RMS, it's 100 hertz and that's 300 hertz 400, 500 8, 9, 1 kilohertz 2 kilohertz starting to drop off in level a bit down to 3.1 4 kilohertz down to 2.7 volts 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 kilohertz and we're down to 2.5 volts now so it's not very flat and still fairly distorted I can still crank it up and I could, of course, adjust the uh, treble. Oh, treble doesn't do anything. Right. Oh, that was the bass, sorry. That was the bass. There's the treble. Yeah, you can adjust it up a bit using the treble at 10 kilohertz. You expect it to do that. So I've got up to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, well, it's still fairly flat, I suppose. Um, still fairly distorted, that's 20 kilohertz and that's 20 kilohertz at roughly clipping, it's hard to know where clipping begins and distortion ends it's all part of the same thing so if I look up the audio analyzer now it's reading 7.8% distortion at 20 kilohertz which it's just as bad as before basically um, but uh, I think the only final thing I can do to test this and then probably have a quick look in it, inside it is to have a look at this sub output so I'll just wire that up oh yeah one thing I forgot before I do the sub output how much power does it draw well it's at the moment turned up to maximum of three and a half watts at one kilohertz again and we look up at the power supply it's 12 volts, 1.7 amps so just do the uh, calculation on that okay. 1.7 times 12 so it's drawing 20 watts to produce about 7 out it's not even terribly efficient either. I mean, normally you expect uh, class D amplifiers to be 80 to 90 percent efficiency, so it's failed on that as well. Efficiency. Anyway, I just wired up for the sub. Right, I'm now feeding in 100 hertz into this, and I'm connected up to the uh, sub base output. I noticed that. I'm twiddling the controls, it makes abs that's the volume control, main volume, makes no difference whatsoever apart from dropping it down a bit because obviously the other channels are loading it more as I turn that volume up. Treble makes no difference at all as I'm twiddling that. Bass makes no difference at all. So, oh yeah, of course you've got a, I've just discovered it's got its own volume control for the sub bass. So that's, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? So that's the sub bass uh, volume. And actually, that looks a lot better, that sine wave at 100 hertz. That's um, quite a decent sine wave with no visible distortion at all. So I'm a bit more impressed with that. And I could go up to 200 hertz, maybe. Um, to Ah, it starts to drop off a bit now, 200 hertz, okay. It's obviously got a low, uh, a low pass uh, filter in that sub output amplifier. That's back to 100 hertz. If we go up to the audio analyzer, which is measuring watts, there you go, 8.2 watts. Well, that's a bit more impressive. Still not going to set the world on fire, but 8.2 watts is better than the uh, other outputs. So, yeah, what's the distortion like, I wonder? I 
that's now the output voltage 100 Hertz frequency distortion uh, just before clipping is 0.4 per 0.48 49% that is not too bad I guess it's certainly a lot better than the main outputs were so hmm I'm going to look it up and see what it says on the listing about this. So here's my phone and I've managed to find it on eBay. My phone of course is turned off and it calls itself Mini Amp Car Mini Amplifier 2.1 channel whatever Class D Stereo Amplifier Super Bass £18.55 and specifications is what I want. I think I must have lost my Wi-Fi signal, that's why it's taking so long to load up. Obviously, um, it's running on 4G, my phone at the moment. Okay, well it says it's got 2 times 40 watts. I wonder how they measured that. It goes back to the old uh, thing about peak music power and all that rubbish. What's it, what's it say? Uh, Compatible CD, MP3, iPod, whatever. Motorcycle car. Don't think we'd hear that on a motorcycle somehow. With that power output. Low distortion. Audio amplifier. I see. With low distortion. Bloody liars. High quality audios. <laughs> it's a joke. Compatibility. Works well with whatever, whatever, whatever. Mini size. Yes, it's mini size. Base 60 watts. Unbelievable! Where have all the watts gone then? I only measured eight. <laughs> Frequency response on the main output: 100 hertz, 20 kilohertz. Well, I suppose it's roughly right. 12 volts, 5 amps. Uh, warning: Please use qualified 12 volt for me. Oh, whatever. Yeah, there it is. Being installed in a lovely car. I wouldn't want that thing in my lovely car. And as I said, the, the stereo in the car would be more powerful than that was. Oh, you could put it in your home, of course, yeah. That'd be quite nice to have in the house. Yeah. Might be alright for computer speakers, maybe. Packaging clues, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. That's about it for that. So, the specifications don't uh, live up to what they say. But that's normal with eBay. And for 18 quid, you ain't going to get a lot, of, lot for your money, are you? So I've uh, took the top off it, and uh, where are the output chips, you wonder? Because what we've got here is, we've got a couple of 8-pin chips, one there, one there. They're, they're obviously op-amps, I recognise that number, 4558, common op-amp used in cheap uh, Chinese stuff, whatever. So that's the top side of the board, obviously, with the volume controls and tone controls. So all the magic bits must be underneath. And if you notice the, uh, you might be able to see the tracks through the top of the board. They've obviously got the uh, um, Class D magic going on underneath. Because they've got various sc screws there coming up. And screws from the bottom. Now... I undid these screws and took the nuts off, but I still couldn't get it apart, and I'm frankly getting rather bored with it now, so I'm not going to take it apart any further, but it's pretty obvious that the Class D chips are under, on the other side of the board, bolted down to the, to the bottom of the case. So, what else is to say about it? Not a lot, really. Um, no, put it all back together, I guess. So, in conclusion, what do I think of this thing? Not a lot really, um, it's quite well made I suppose, uh, it looks quite nice, um, but really the uh, technical performance is pretty poor, I mean 3.5 watts on the main outputs and with all that distortion, 
it's pretty awful really uh, it's only really the redeeming feature is the uh, sub bass output at 8 watts and minimal distortion but all in all I think it's fairly hideous and so I'm sorry Dan and Fred I don't like your amplifier but I do like my roof so that's one happy ending so bye for now